Okay, welcome back. I left you right in the middle of some naming and formula writing problems. We're going to do a bunch of practice uh, on this video for ionic compounds, and I'll even do some of assignment 21 for you if you stay tuned all the way to the end. So please pay attention. Try to work with me on this. I'm going to start with a little bit of review, and then we're going to jump in and we'll do some more uh, formula writing and naming. Okay? So if you remember, we left off with the compound CUS. And we wanted to call it copper sulfide, which is not a bad idea. But our problem is, is that copper is one of those transition metals. And it can have more than one charge. It can be plus one or plus two, if you remember. So we need to tell the reader which copper we're talking about. Is it plus one or is it plus two? So we use Roman numerals to tell you the charge of the metal ion. Do you remember that? Now, we didn't know copper's charge right away, but we did know sulfur's charge. Sulfur has 16 electrons. It wants to get to 18, so it's 2 negative. Now, of course, that makes copper 2 positive, because the sum of the 2 has to equal 0. So we put the Roman numeral 2 in there to tell us that copper is 2 positive. It does not tell us that there are two coppers or two sulfurs, because there aren't. There's one of each. That Roman numeral, once again, I'm beating this to death, is the charge of the metal ion. Okay, it's not how many coppers or sulfurs we have. Sometimes, coincidentally, it is. All right, let's name this guy, SRSE. Now, for all of these, you should pause and try doing it without my help. Um, of course, most of you aren't going to do that, but it's a good way to help you learn. If you pause it and try this without me doing it for you, then, you know, press the pause button again and play. You can see how to do it and see if you did it right and see if you're learning. Okay, now SR is strontium, and SE is selenium, but we have to end it with I. But before I do that, I'm going to check to see if I need Roman numerals for strontium. Strontium is right here. Is that one of those that we need Roman numerals for? It has 38 electrons, wants to get to 36. Don't members of group 2, the alkaline earth metals, always lose 2? They are always 2 positive. Strontium is always 2 plus, so I don't need Roman numerals to tell the reader that it's 2 plus. The reader should understand that. So we don't need Roman numerals for strontium. But we do need to end this with ide, so we're going to call it selenide. So strontium selenide, that does not need Roman numerals. So now you guys are all asking a question. You're saying Hummer. Well, when do we need Roman numerals? Up here we did, up here we did, up here we did, here we didn't, and then on the other page we didn't need any. So when do we and when don't we? That's a great question. So, when are Roman numerals required in a name? And I'm going to make a very general statement and then we'll qualify it, okay? All metals need Roman numerals after their name. And you're going to say, wait a minute, that's not true. Strontium didn't need Roman numerals, so come on, Hummer. Seriously, we don't always need Roman numerals. Well, there are some exceptions. Okay, and here they are. The exceptions are the metals in group 1, group 2, Um, do not need aluminum, zinc, cadmium, and silver. Do not need Roman numerals. Okay, all other metals do. Okay, so if they're in group one, group two, aluminum, zinc, cadmium, or silver, they don't. But all other metals will need Roman numerals after their name. Because if you look at the periodic table, if it's not in group 1, and it's not in group 2, it's not aluminum, zinc, silver, or cadmium, these metals here can have more than one charge. And so we need to tell the reader what that charge is. And so it's just about every metal will need Roman numerals after it. Okay? Now before we go any further, here are some handy hints. And we've actually learned this already and you can see we put number we put in sorry horrible English we put numbers on top of some of these groups 
and also beside some of the elements. And we're just going to reinforce that now. All elements except for hydrogen in group 1 in the periodic table have a charge of plus 1 and never anything else. So all these guys here are always going to be positive 1. Uh, group 2, they will always be positive 2 and never anything else. So these guys are always going to be plus 2. Group 17 have a charge of negative 1. So all these guys over here are going to be negative 1, never anything else. Group 16 will be 2 negative and never anything else. So these guys right here are always going to be 2 negative, never anything else. I'm going to add to that. The non-metals in group 3 will be 3 negative and never anything else. But there are some metals down here, and we need Roman numerals for those. But the non-metals up here will always be negative 3 and never anything else. All other metals have more than one charge. And that charge needs to be given in the name by Roman numerals. There are three metals in this category. Oh, I made a mistake. There are four metals in this category uh, that are exceptions. Aluminum is always positive three. So in my periodic table, I'm, only, I'm going to put a little three plus there to remind me of that. Zinc and cadmium are always two positive. We've already done that earlier. We, we actually learned why they're always two positive. And silver is always one positive. Okay, all other metals though will need Roman numerals. Okay, let's do a few from your homework. So I'm going to turn this over, and we're going to practice a few from assignment 21. Okay, so assignment 21 homework. So let's do uh, number one, letter A. All right, now letter A says sodium sulfide. And what it would like you to do is write the formula for sodium sulfide. So we know sodium is Na, and sodium is in group 1, has 11 electrons, wants to get to 10. You know, you guys should know that it's positive 1. Sulfide comes from sulfur. So sulfur is in groups, it's uh, atomic number 16, wants to get to 18, it's 2 negative. So S2 negative. So what would the formula be between sodium and sulfur? Well, if you said Na2S, you are correct. Good job. You need two sodiums to balance out the charge of that one sulfur. Okay? Take a look at letter B. Letter B is lithium oxide. So lithium, Li, and lithium's in group 1. It's positive 1. Oxide comes from oxygen. It's in group 16. It's negative 2. So once again, to balance the charge, I need two lithiums against my one oxygen. Li2O. Sort of kind of easy so far? Alright. Let's do letter C. Letter C is chromium. Roman numeral 2. Chloride. Alright, now these actually should be easier because we don't have to look up the charge of the metal. The charge of the metal is given to us. Chromium is 2. So chromium is 2 plus. Chloride comes from chlorine. That's in group 17. It's negative 1. So what's the formula here? Well, if you said Cr... Cl2, good job. You need two chlorides to balance out the two positive from my chromium. Right, let me do another one for you. Letter D. This is manganese 4 oxide. Manganese, Roman numeral 4 oxide. Okay? Once again, the Roman numeral's there, so we know the charge of the metal right away. Manganese is 4 plus. That's what that Roman numeral tells us. Oxide comes from oxygen. It's 2 negative. Alright, so what's the formula going to be here? Well, I claim if I had 2 oxides, I'd have 4 negatives against my 4 positive. So the formula would be MnO2. There we go. Okay. Now, um, Let's go, and I want to talk about polyatomic ions, and we'll do a few more from your homework, and we'll call it good. All right? So the second type of ionic compound involves something called polyatomic ions. So we have a metallic element combined with a negative polyatomic. Polyatomic ions, also known as radicals, are ions made of 
of more than one atom. Okay, so they're units of atoms bonded together and they form an ion. Now in the back of your periodic table, the very front of the manual, is a list of polyatomic ions or radicals that you need to know for this class. And here they are. We have acetate. And uh, there are two, two ways that we see acetate commonly. I usually use this one, C2H3O2-1. Ammonium. That's the only positive polyatomic that we worry about most of the time. Arsenate, not very common. Benzoate, not very common. Bicarbonate is HCO3-1 is the bicarbonate ion. It's also known as hydrogen carbonate. Bromate, not very common. Carbonate, very common. That's a carbon and three oxygens bonded together to form a two negative charge. We actually drew the Lewis structure for that in the previous chapter. Chlorate, ClO3-1. Chlorite, ClO2-1. Chromate, CrO4-2. So you see that these are all groups of atoms that have a charge. So they're polyatomic ions. So let me do a couple of examples for you, and maybe we'll do one or two from your homework, okay? So example six. Write the formula for the compound chromium 3 nitrate. Now I like it when I see Roman numerals because right away that tells me the charge of the metal. I know that chromium is 3 plus. Boom. That's easy. Now this is nitrite. Now notice it doesn't end with "-ied". There are a couple of polyatomics that do, but usually if it ends with "-ied", we're going to get an atom, a negative ion here. So that's almost always the case, but this time it ends with "-ite", and so that should signal to you that that's a polyatomic. Now I have these listed alphabetically at the front of your manual, and there's nitrite, and it says NO2-1. So, NO2 negative one. Now it looks like I need three of these nitrites to balance the charge of my chromium. Don't you agree? So I write the formula as CR and since I need three of these, pay attention, I put the polyatomic in parentheses and the number I need outside. See I needed three of those. So I put the polyatomic in parentheses and the number I needed on the outside. So that's the formula for chromium Three, nitrite. Well, what if I give you the formula and ask for the name? Well, we might have to use Roman numerals here, so let's take a look. Re is rhenium. Now let's find that on our periodic table here. Um, where is rhenium? Here we go. Right there. It's one of those transition metals. It needs Roman numerals. Okay? So I'm going to leave a space for Roman numerals. SO4 is obviously a polyatomic ion. So, SO4, there it is, right there. It's called sulfate. So we don't change the ending of polyatomics. We just write their name down. So it's rhenium something sulfate. Now we've got to figure out the charge of rhenium. Put that in parentheses. Now there's two sulfates, and the charge of each sulfate, let's take a look, is negative 2. So if each sulfate is negative 2, and there are two of them, isn't that four negatives? That means rhenium has to be four positive. So that's the Roman numeral I would put in parentheses. Rhenium four sulfate. Okay, think about that one. You might want to rewind it and watch that over again to see how I did that. Okay, number eight, silver permanganate. Notice there's no Roman numeral after silver. It's one of our exceptions, isn't it? So we have silver, and you should know that that's always plus one and never anything else. Permanganate is MnO4 negative one. So I only need one of each, don't I, to balance the charge. So the formula is Ag MnO4 and do that. Okay, let's do one more. CO, and then we have this OH in parentheses here. CO is cobalt. Does that need Roman numerals? Let's take a look. Cobalt is right there. It definitely does. So I'm going to leave room for Roman numerals. 
I have to tell the charge of the metal there in just a second. OH is a polyatomic ion. It's one of the few polyatomic ions that end in ide. OH is negative one and it's hydroxide. So it's cobalt something hydroxide. So we've got to figure out the charge of the cobalt. So remember hydroxide, there's two of them, and each one is negative one. Okay, so that means I have a total of two negatives there. Right? One negative for each hydroxide, that means cobalt's two positive. So that is cobalt two hydroxide. Okay? Alright, on the next video I'll probably give you a little bit of homework help. A little bit more homework help, I should say, but this should get you going. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.